So if you find this sleep story helpful or interesting, then give it a thumbs up, leave any comments that you've got below. And if you aren't already, subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so you can receive notifications of when future sleep stories go live. I have dozens and dozens of stories already on my channel that you can go and search. I also release new stories every single week. So I hope you enjoy this story. So as you take a moment to close your eyes and begin to drift comfortably asleep, I'm just going to tell this guided sleep meditation in the background. In this meditation about a woman meditating in front of a campfire. And as she sits there, keeping herself still, keeping her back straight, just focusing on the sounds of that crackling campfire, noticing the flickering of the flame of the campfire through her eyelids, hearing the sounds in the background of birds in trees, The distant sound of the water in the lake lapping gently on the shore, feeling the breeze on her face, feeling the warmth from the fire, and relaxing deeper and more comfortably into the meditation. And she focuses on being present, being in the moment, being still. And as she does so, she begins to have this sense that she's floating and drifting out of her body. And she has a sense of floating, drifting, above where she's resting, meditating in front of that campfire. And she finds herself looking down upon herself. And she can see herself sat there, see the way she's breathing in and out. She can see the flickering flame of the campfire. And as she rises up further, so she can notice the grass around that her sat down there. She can notice the tent behind that her sat down there. And as she continues to rise up, so she notices the full extent of the clearing that she sat meditating in. She notices the forest beyond the clearing. And she can notice the movement of the trees in the breeze. And she continues to rise up as she relaxes deeper in that meditation. And she holds her focus, helping her to rise up higher in the sky, and to relax deeper into the meditation. And she can notice, almost like, just the finest golden threads connecting her with her body down there. And she has this feeling of being cooled, Almost like there's somebody somewhere reaching out for her. And so she focuses on that sensation, on that feeling. And as she does, so she begins to notice almost like a purple thread appearing in front of her, stretching off up into space. And she focuses on that purple thread. And while she focuses on that purple thread, so it 
becomes more vivid. And she starts to follow that thread. And then she reaches down and gently places her hand where that thread is. And it's almost like a thread of energy, rather than a thread of an actual object. And as she reaches for that thread, and her hand touches that thread, so she instantly seems to be transported from where she is to a new location. And she doesn't know where this location is. She finds herself stood at the top of enormous sand dunes. And she notices herself as being a physical being again. And she walks around on top of these sand dunes, feeling the warmth from the sun in the sky. And she sees someone on the sand dune, sitting, cross-legged, meditating. And she walks over to that meditating person. And as she approaches them, they tell her that they were expecting her. And they open their eyes and they stand up. And they tell her that they needed her help. That they've been meditating for an incredibly long time, waiting for somebody to figure out how to separate from their reality and to access a timeless dimension of reality. A dimension of reality that allows a moment to be just a moment or to last for an eternity. And this person explains that they needed somebody who had the right attitude, the right approach to reality, to help them to access something a little way from these dunes. And the woman asks what it is. And this person explains that they're on a different planet, that she's no longer on Earth, she's on a planet many light years from Earth, and that at night time they can point out where the Earth's sun is, so that she can get an idea of where she is in relationship to her home planet. But for now, all she has to know is that by touching that thread of light, while she was just energy floating outside of her body, separate from her physical reality, she was able to use it almost like a highway that instantaneously transports you to the other end of that thread. And that that thread wasn't a thread until she was about to touch it. That they've been sat here meditating. Almost like passing out a ball of energy in all directions or a ball of consciousness that's been reaching out to touch anyone who has the ability to connect with it. And it isn't really a ball of energy, it's more a ball of possibility. 
a ball of quantum possibilities. Where as soon as one part of that ball reaches what is being searched for, a route between them there meditating and that person becomes the only path. And they explain it like light is just a wave spreading out in all directions with many possibilities. But as soon as there's a way of measuring a particle, that light has a fixed position and becomes a particle. And that's what's happened here. That there was an infinite number of paths to take. But as soon as one found the destination, that path became the only path. And they travelled along that path instantaneously to here. And now they can help to find a fountain of youth that's in some old ruins. And this fountain of youth isn't quite what it seems or sounds like, but it can only be accessed by two like-minded people with different frequencies of energy accessing their energy while near the fountain and the woman wondered how they get to these ruins and the person said that you have to travel down the sand dune that at the foot of the sand dunes you have to go on a long trek. And then eventually you'll arrive at the destination. And the woman wondered how to get down those sand dunes. And then this person gave them what looked like skis and said this is the quickest and easiest way down and she attached them to her feet and they attached similar to their feet and then they launched themselves down the side of the sand dune and the woman was reminded of skiing holidays in the Alps. But she had never skied on sand. And the two of them weaved and turned and navigated their way down the dune. And she found this exhilarating and wondered if people on earth ski down sand dunes. And as they skidded to a halt at the base of the sand dune, they took the skis off and continued the journey on foot. And the sunlight overhead felt dazzling. It was so incredibly bright. And although it wasn't quite as hot as she imagined a desert being, it was still very hot. And after a long walk, well away from those steep sand dunes, she could notice that there was just the subtlest sign of buildings poking up through the sand. large 
stone walls and stone blocks and they arrived at those ruins and explored around the ruins and she ran her hand around some of the stone feeling how smooth the chiselled stone was and noticing other stone that appeared to have been weathered from rain and she wondered whether it ever really did rain here and other stone appeared to be weathered from extensive flowing water and she realised that some of these ruins were ancient and other ruins were very old but not so old as those ancient ruins and that the ancient ruins must have been built in a time when this area was fertile when there was perhaps frequent flooding and then towards the end of that period perhaps a few thousand years later they were building these buildings still but there was far less water around and with so little water around, she wondered how they would find a fountain of youth. And the two of them found their way around the ruins and found an entrance into what looked like a ruined temple. And they had to dig out some of the loose sand to uncover the entrance enough to squeeze in they squeezed in through that entrance. And the first thing the woman noticed once she was in the entrance was how different it feels to be in here out of the wind, out of the heat of the sun, not having sand blown in your face. And how much quieter it was, that even though it wasn't particularly noisy out in the desert, you had the sound of the wind rushing past your ears. You had the sound of sand moving on sand. And now in here, there was just the slightest rumble from the air blowing in. But you couldn't really feel that air. And then there was an echo to each footstep that was taken. And they were surprised to find that as soon as they entered the corridor, torches illuminated the way forward, as if somehow there was a way of this temple recognising that people were here. And they could notice light dancing on the walls, as they followed the passageways through to the main part of the temple and the passageways opened out into a vast chamber and in the middle of this chamber was a circular pool of water and in the middle of that pool of water was a small fountain just bubbling up at the centre And the woman wondered what it was that she was supposed to do. This person had described this as the fountain of youth and that it took two of them to be able to activate it and to make use of it. And they both held one hand of each other and with their other hand they rested it in two symbols that were on the edge of the fountain. And just where these two symbols were meant that their hands were just inside the water. And out of the person's hand emanated a purple light beginning to illuminate that water. 
and out of the woman's hand came a golden light, also illuminating the water, and the gold and the purple, mixed together in the water, glowing, dancing with each other, with that light glowing and dancing, and the woman was transfixed on the sight of the dancing light in the water. As the fountain began to rise a bit higher, with glowing purple and gold water spraying up and sploshing into that pool, and then beginning to form a mist, and out of that mist formed what seemed like the shape of a person, and they seemed to have an almost ethereal look to them, and it looked almost like they were made out of mist, no white, the most beautiful and pure white, they had wings, they were floating just above that fountain of youth. And they began to talk to the two people. They began to explain that there are many worlds, and across those many worlds, humans have been dotted around to see how they'll develop under different circumstances. And that with time, humans will evolve in different planets to begin to seek out new life, new civilizations. And when they do, they'll discover that many of those civilizations look very similar to each other. That life had been seeded throughout the galaxy, and that this fountain of youth is actually a portal that connects worlds, that there's a fountain just like it on every single planet, just waiting to be found, and each fountain connects each world to each other world through the water, but to activate it requires two enlightened beings to come together as one, to work together, to turn on these portals across worlds that are like a superhighway that allows you to traverse all of the inhabited planets in the galaxy. And that now the two of you have come together and turned the system on. Any of these fountains can be used to travel to any of the other fountains. And they explain that there's a catch. That you can't just travel there physically. That you have to travel through the energy within the water, that there's a network similar to the process that brought the two of you together, and that it's only by meditating, by being able to separate yourself out from your physical being, that you can then traverse that water fountain network and that now there's at least two of you that know how to do that and you can go away and teach others to be able to be still to be able to rise up from your body and hold that way of being to be able to float through space and time 
to find the fountain to traverse the habitable planets. And this is why these are the fountains of youth, because they're timeless. They transcend all time. And they help you to recapture an old way of being. And these fountains of youth are portals between worlds. As you travel like this, you don't age. You can take on physical forms. You can interact with others who are doing the same as you. And while you're doing all that, time where you set off from stops. and only continues again when you arrive back in your own body. And you can find the fountains by focusing your attention on them. And that now they're all turned on. They'll work in a similar way to how the two of you connected that there'll be a constant pulse of energy released from each fountain. And when you focus on a fountain, a connection will be formed between you and that fountain. And then you can pass through the fountain. And as you pass through the fountain, so you can discover new worlds. And that in a moment you can give that a go. To explore how to navigate the fountains. And as quickly as this being appeared, they turned back almost into water droplets, falling back down into the fountain. And the woman and the other person, both focused on traversing this fountain network. And as they did, they felt like they were being spiralled into the fountain. And then within that fountain, it was as if they were in space. As if they could look around and see hundreds and hundreds of planets surrounding them. And they could notice that each planet was in a system and had its own star. And they could then choose, they could look at a planet and choose to visit. And just by looking at the planet and thinking about visiting, they found themselves springing out of a fountain on that planet. And they decided at first to explore the same planet each, to go together. And they sprung out of a fountain on a planet finding themselves on an island surrounded by ocean. They noticed that it was night time here. They could see the most beautiful blanket of stars stretched across the sky. They could hear that ocean gently lapping on the shore. And they noticed as that ocean gently lapped on the shore that the edge of the ocean was glowing. And they decided to go for a swim in that water. The evening felt so warm 
and the water felt so warm. And they walked into that water and dived down under the water and realised that as they are now, although they take on physical bodies to interact with the world around them, they're not physical bodies as they usually know them to be. These physical bodies are just illusory shells and they're able to swim underwater, no need to breathe, no need to try and hold their breath. Because the physical body is really just an illusion. And they watch as large whale-like creatures gracefully swim past. Shoals of fish. They can see the way. The waves are passing overhead, illuminated by the moons in the sky. They can notice how slow and peaceful everything seems here underwater, and the beauty of this dive before they swim up to the surface and leave that water and fly up above the island, above that water to get a perspective of this world and they head back to the fountain pass through the fountain again Choose another world where they exit a fountain and they see some children play in a small village and children laughing on a nice warm sunny day. And they watch as those children play. They can hear some dogs barking and notice some children a little way off playing fetch with the dogs. They see some of the adults working, carrying things from place to place. They notice a market with people selling fruit and veg and meats and different items of clothing and various other items in the market. And then they head back to the fountain. And they wonder how they know which of all the planets is their own to find their way back to where they came. And as they wonder this, so they notice a glow around their planet. The woman notices that there's a slight golden glow around the planet she started on around Earth. And the other person notices a slight purple glow around the planet that they were on. And the two of them head to the purple planet. And come back out of that fountain. Head out of the ruins. And they talk about their experience. This person says that they come from a nearby village 
And they come out here every day to meditate in the desert. And the woman explains that where she comes from, she makes a long journey out into a forest, to a clearing in the forest by a lake and that she finds that the perfect spot to meditate. And they're aware that they can actually meditate anywhere. And they learn about how to do this meditation again in the future. And then the woman says that she's going to head back to her planet now. And as she focuses on that, so that golden thread moves her back to floating above her body on her planet. She gently lowers down into her body, moves around a little, has a sense of being grounded, a feeling of being at one with the world around her, knowledge of her experience, curiosity about where she'll go in the future and about all those different portals. And she heads home. And that night she relaxes and drifts asleep comfortably and deeply while thinking about her experiences and about the adventures she'll go on and she plans on teaching more people how to be able to do the same as she does to raise up their consciousness to be able to traverse space and time 